YouTubers, welcome back to the channel again. Zion Prepper. I was able to sit down with him a few days ago and talk to him about Teo Tawaki, the end of the world as we know it. People pronounce it Teo Tawaki, mm -hmm. and exactly what it means to specifically uh, Arkansas Prepper and myself, because uh, I think we both have different meanings of what it is, and that meaning influences how we prepare. And it influences what we prepare for exactly. for our family. That's right. For you and your family, what does Teotihuacan mean? When someone says the end of the world or, or doomsday, I, I picture meteorites hitting the earth and, and gases in the air. And it's the end of the earth. I mean, this is not something that, that I'm preparing for because I, you know, I mean, my, the way I feel about it is it gets to that point, it's done too late. Maybe the end of society as we know it. Maybe that's more of it. It's not really the end of the world. I, I don't picture it that way. And, and that was one reason why with the doomsday thing, it was bothering me because I was thinking, you know, doomsday prepper, I, I mean, I, I thought they were talking about people that thought the world was going to end. I mean, actually thought the world was going to like blow up. Absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more. So it sounds like for, for you, uh, the, the end of the world as we know it is probably more of a significant life altering event. That's right. Something that changes your life now that you probably didn't have an opportunity to prepare for. Well, you're a prepper, you're prepared for it, right. but right. maybe mentally you didn't know it was coming. Yeah. It happened. Now I've got to rely on everything I've done in the past. I'm thinking about my world. You know, uh, my yeah. world was a lot larger world when I was a teenager. I was in a car, I was always going, I was always doing things, going to ball games. Yeah. And the older we get, the smaller our world gets. And, uh, for, you know, we've all got our opinions, but it has a lot to do with where you live. You know? It does. And, and your motives. I mean, for me, the end of the world, the end of the world as we know it has a different meaning. I, I'm not afraid of a hurricane tornado. I'm not afraid of economic collapse. I'm not afraid of a significant life altering event. They're going to happen. Can I control some of them? Maybe a little. The majority of them, I cannot control, uh, even though I could give my input. Um, and so what I worry about when all those events happen is the people. I, yes. I don't care about the events because I was in New York, granted upstate New York, when 9-11 happened. Thing, I saw all those, um, all the essentials, water, flour, everything wiped out within an hour of 9-11. I personally saw that. I was one of those people who when I went home, we had one or two days worth of food. Now, granted, it didn't impact us that much, but the way the people reacted the way they panicked, and I was one of them. You know, I didn't have gas in my car because I always waited till the last moment. Right. That, that to me, was the end of the world as we knew it because for the first time in my life, I thought, oh, no, how am I going to feed my kids if something happens? Yes. And that scared me more than anything in the world. I look at history, Katrina, seeing how the people reacted there, firearms, rape, yes. uh, gangs, pillaging, fires. Yes. It's the people. Yes. The event didn't. The event maybe created it, but the people sustained it, and, and they created all the chaos. People become unruly and out of control. There's not enough police officers. I can tell you right now, there's not enough police officers. There's right. no way there is. My small community has six, but you figure yeah. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, how many hours they'd have to work, you know? And it's never all six of them on at one time. If something did happen, it would be all six of them. But how long could they last at that? Right. And are they not going to be concerned about their own families? For me, the end of the, you know, when I look at the end of the world as we know it, it's going to really start when all my preps are gone. My preps will last us six to nine months at best. Mm -hmm. In that six to nine months, I better create an alternative plan to live off the land, to hunt or, or something, because my preps will only get me so far. That's right. Those are the things I define as the end of the world as we know it. Everything that we used to know, some of it's still relevant, a lot of it is not. And, and for me, that's it. That That is really it because it's to protect my family from the people. Yes. I know what they're going to do. Yeah. Their emotions would just take over their common sense. And it's like, hey, yeah. you know, you're making it worse than what it really is, so let's all stop, calm down, take a breath. You know, and slow down a little bit. Yeah. And but but if everybody's doing that, if everybody's running around wondering what they're going to do, I don't think people are going to just uh, you know 
be shooting the streets up. I mean, it, it's possible. I mean, I know it is. And and with Katrina, it was it was really amazing. If you want to see something, yep. go to videos yep. of Katrina. They showed stuff in the Superdome that you know, all the way from the trash to you know, ladies reporting rape, you know, because mm-hmm. there was no law enforcement um, to food for the kids. It was just absolutely horrendous, and that's because that's how people react. When I look at Teotihuacan from my kids' perspective, we talk a lot, and even though I prep and my wife preps, I don't think they'll, you know, their their perspective is different. Their end of the world as we know it is when the internet goes down and they can't get on their iPhone, Nothing or they can't get on, you know, um, yes. th- their iPod. Yes. That is the end of their world. I said, I, you know, so I said, kids, you know, I tried to set them down and make them understand that you know, this is in, insignificant in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. But you're getting a little, little, little taste of what it could be like. Right. You know, now imagine there's no running water. Now imagine, you know, the refrigerator shut down. Ima- you know, yes. 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 that for them, that simple event was the end of the world as they knew it. Thinking about it, a second facet of the end of the world as we know it is not only the people, but we, we have to, we're exposed to Mother Nature in a way we never were prior to that. You know, whether whether it's no running water, you know, secondary heat, it's it's different. It, you know, um, Mother Nature exposes us to the elements, the true Mother Nature. Mm. I just did an article with our local newspaper, and we were talking about preppers. And the first question she asked me, and it set the tone for me, was, okay, what's the difference between a prepper and somebody who's paranoid? You know, I went in and explained. We started talk. I gave her scenarios. I didn't give her op- opinion. I talked about the facts. I said, "Tell you tell me. I, this is me asking the, the reporter. You tell me what happened in Katrina. So she explained it. I said, you tell me what happened in Japan when the tsunami hit. So she explained it. You know, overseas you had earthquakes that completely destroyed a city. Tell me what happened. You know, I got her focused on this is how the people reacted. It kind of came together for her to yeah. say, you know, she said, ah, that I, I understand. She didn't say she agreed, but she said, right. I understand. My concern was that tone was going to be, you know, it's the end of the world as we know it. And this is what these guys prepare for. My number one reason I prep is my family. Yes. Now, will I take care of others? Absolutely. Where I can, yes. I will take care of others. But I can't do it at the expense of my family. I just can't do that. And my dad, too, It's you know, he kind of thought I was crazy being a prepper. And I talk to him all the time. We talk every day. And he, I sent him my book and he read it. And he's like, you know... That makes absolute sense. I now understand what you're talking about. And he's like, he's got a big trailer at the house that, you know, really good shape. So he says, I'm going to send that up your way. You need to put your preps in there, you know, so you can just hook your truck up and head out of town. And that was just kind of, for me, a validation that he That's knew right. I'm not preparing for the end of the world. That's right. I'm preparing for an end of the world, but as I know it, not the world, literally. YouTubers, Tio Tawaki. The end of the world as we know it. What does it mean to you?